I started this library to share information and it's not very easy to share information if some people are limited on their ability to access that information and it's come to my attention especially where I've been talking lately and I've been in communication with several people in northern New South Wales I forget that well I used to do it I used to get uh, data on my mobile phone and use that data so not only is there a, a limited data usage but also a limited stream to actually get that through on and I have not accommodated for that in a lot of my uploads now this is going out to pretty much the Mount Burrell community that um, I know that there are people out there that would like to access some of this information but are having issues with that. So if you would like to leave a comment and if you want me to um, take the videos that are relating to your community area and reduce them down to the smallest size uh, that I can and upload them here for you or um, well I don't want to re-upload them again to YouTube but I can like I have done with other ones here uh, just do a massive upload so that you can just go in there and pick out each uh, video that you wanted to watch and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because um, there's a lot been going on in your community for a lot of years and well it's probably seeming too many now and it is my belief that there are more that are concerned and do not agree with what's been going on in this community and would prefer that it not have been a problem or an issue in the first place and I know that there are people that have had experiences that have been none too pleasant and there have been threats made to people, threats carried out and this kind of behaviour has to stop. The more that others think that they're in isolation the more you become a target. This is where you can step into your own and show how you do work as a community. I know you do it already very well and you know, I'm not even in the area I can't even tell you as much as what you could tell me but I can coordinate a lot of things and bring information to a place where people can come to have a look at it so if you wanted to drop me a line um, a message uh, take it from there so, uh, there are many ways that I can communicate with people but just as a quick thing while I'm on it, to, for those that haven't been able to watch the other videos, my involvement was, as I said, about four years ago, was the last time I was in New South Wales. And I did have an experience with an alternative community that didn't end up being the best for me or for my two you know, young adult kids, teenagers. So um, I sort of walked away with, um, you know, deflated expectations about what we as human beings could actually achieve because ego seemed to get in the way so much. And it always seemed to come back to the same egos that I do more, I pay more, I contribute more. And it is, it is not um, an idyllic situation when you find yourself that you thought the government was oppressive with a lot of rules oh wait till you go to where they've got rules on rules on rules and they like to change them on a daily basis even though there's a format now I did have a different um, thing to present today but I got a little bit sidetracked and discovered uh, bankruptcy listings but before I get on to bankruptcy listings and other things like that I have previously presented um, a web page with the bookmarks and these were all the names that I had just gathered both from the judgment summaries 
and anywhere else that they were associated. Some people are even on there just because they were associated with that person in some other context in the past. So they're not necessarily involved with the community um, before or now. But uh, that was only with a couple of individuals. Now, I haven't focused on a lot of individuals in this at this stage because I've been dealing with the top rung of the pyramid, the developers. Then there's one underneath that, there's the promoters. Then you've got the planners and consultants and the legal side that uh, the developers work in to coordinate, to put out to the investor side. So I've pretty well identified the, um, the developers in it and the promoters and these three people here I have not been really like I know they're still members but I do not have anything other than I know they're still members so essentially they are not an upfront part they could be just someone that's sitting back doing their own stuff uh, there are others that were listed that I've found out since then that are not on the list of uh, developers but on the list of victims. The first one was actually Andrew Cody. Now his name was only mentioned in the very beginning because it was his original concept and idea to set up this community. And he came in, um, he met Mark Darwin and they discussed it but they did not have the means or the know-how basically um, to achieve that dream and in came the third party Adrian Brennock so basically after everything that's gone on through the years I'm not going to go through all of that because if you're a Mount Burrell um, member you'll probably know community member I mean not this community member <laughs> You'll know better than what I'm saying here, what's going on. But um, Mark Darwin is definitely not in the uh, community, the nightcap community anymore. And I don't think Andrew Cody ever was. I, I think that it was his original concept and uh, somehow, somewhere down the line, um, it got swept away from him as um, as things happen you know many of people have a bright idea and someone else scoops it up and runs with it and the person that had the idea is left there going well you know I did have a good idea so um, and to Marty to Marty Kirkwood is also another victim. He and his wife, uh, these articles here relate to, um, I think it's Sarah, Sarah and John, uh, Tomati Kirkwood and their four kids. There were several articles done on them in the Northern Star and videos too. So, and they're not the only family, I believe, that's lost out. These are also people that this um, John Tomati records that he sold his house in Perth to um, buy up into this place with the, with the expectation of, well, not what they got. And that's been half the issue of not being able to show that what you get told and what you get delivered is two different things now prove it because um, yeah in a lot of circumstances you can't that's why you know if I'm going to speak to some people these days I don't care I'm going to record it that's with any business dealings any business dealings whatsoever uh, I even thought about doing it with my energy bill the other day <laughs> Now when I'm saying business dealings, this, uh, what I do here with people is not business, it's personal. So in answer to the question, if you're wondering, do I record personal conversations? No, I don't. I don't need to. 
because I do trust the people that I trust. The people that I will talk to, yes, I will trust you, but if I'm not going to talk to you, well, that's probably because I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah. So, and I don't need to find out why, I just trust my instinct. So, I, if rather than go through all the videos and explain all the different things that I've pulled out so far, it might be easier to click on a lot of these links. But the um, at the beginning of this year, there was a lot that came out about phoenixing. And not only is ATSIC and the ATO cracking down on it, but um, it's becoming widespread. And it's the fact of, well, it's pretty much what they say here. It involves stripping and transferring of an entity's assets, thereby denying creditors access to those assets to meet unpaid debts. Creditors, including employees, are often left out of pocket due to illegal phoenixing. This is a very basic description of it, but it's also a very basic description of what I was describing in previous videos where the previous occupants, before it was sold, were occupying and then they took down the for sale sign and said, we got it back. So it appeared that the seller was the buyer. And even the buying hasn't finished going through now. We've still got to wait for the 19th of October to see whether settlement will actually occur. If not, the property will go back up for auction. And those people that have actually been staying there, um, considering the fact that it is the property of a company that is in liquidation, and it's the only asset it's got to sell off to pay any creditors, um, they would have been uh, actually, in a way, renting for free as well. So, um, you know, there's a lot of issues that are going on with this community. And I'd actually like the really like to receive the input from the Mount Burrell community members on how you really feel about what's going on in your community and in uh, try and bring together and all the information so that we can stay up to date is i may not know a lot of what's going on but there are other things that i do know that's going on but i'm not going to say too much about it at this stage there's um Yes, I did mention in a previous video about how don't be surprised if there was a bushfire that went through there. And November last year, they're talking about the threat. And it's like, um, yes, watch out for the threat of bushfire this summer. I think um, most of you are probably already aware of it. Now, um, I've just left links for all these different... Um, phoenixing ones i've also left links for the actual searches so that you can just right click or whatever and bring up the pages yourself and have a look because um what happened was that the tweed council when Wollumbin horizons declared that they were in receivership as is the case that there are usually council and other government bodies that you owe us money, we want to get it back. Now, because Wollumbin Horizons is actually a registered company in Queensland, they went to Queensland into the, the jurisdiction of Queensland to take the action against Wollumbin Horizons in an attempt to recover the or to make a claim uh, for any monies that may be owed them and it was through this that the investigations of phoenixing uh, were brought into question with regards to Wollumbin Horizons. Now Wollumbin Horizons has been linked with the concept of phoenixing and it's been done so in the courts. 
Now, another thing that's also been done in the courts by the government actually taking action themselves through the police, hang on, where are we? Is with Eamon Lowe. He is a member through, um, he's a on the real estate promoter side. His wife, Michaela Lowe, is the first person that you will contact if you click on contact at the uh, Nightcap community. She will answer your email back and take your inquiries and direct them on, in which case she did with me and I got an email back from Richard Moat, who is from Nightcap Realty and also a member. Now, Michaela Lowe runs Wren Realty. She actually has her own LinkedIn profile and uh, yes, that's her business. And her husband, Iman, is, um, well, let's just say that August last year was a very busy time for Iman Lowe when he was taken to court, accused money launderer. Now, at the end of the articles uh, that I've been able to come across, and no more since then, is that they are looking for they had bought it out in concern with cryptocurrencies and money laundering through certain businesses and they finished it off with saying anyone out there that has had experiences um, they believe there are other lost investors and they would like to speak to them so this um, Eamon Lowe is well, I am going to assume that it's still an ongoing investigation considering there's nothing to indicate that it's stopped. And considering the activity of these four YouTube accounts down here that he started up, have only just been started up in 2020 and in May and June. And any other channels that he had are gone, even older posts on previous blogs that uh, they've gone, account suspended. So something's happened and May, June this year, he has started to re-upload promotional material, but he's also got two profiles of a website. One, he's a female, the other one, he's a, he's a man, but one is clearly an older profile that links to um, old, old YouTubes and everything don't work. So that is just um, the investigations going on behind Eamon Lowe. Now I've already talked about Max Egan and um, his uh, Ken O'Keefe scam and debacle and I, I think that um, I won't go into that at this point but I'm just trying to say that there are at least some questionable actions involved with the promoters who are, all, all of these people are confirmed committee, um, community members. They are all confirmed to be part of this committee, no, committee, community. And um, Max Egan especially, he got given it to him. He didn't even have to pay in. He got given it to him. <laughs> Isn't that generous? So yes, um, there's a lot of questionable people, well, questionable actions of people, allegations made against people that really have not been cleared up to the satisfaction of a lot of people. Now I don't want to make this a long video and I'm going to reduce it uh, down to a very small size for the benefit of the Mount Burrell community on smaller bandwidth and limited data. But just before I do say goodbye, <laughs> this, oh, that was, yeah, the suppression of information to me is astounding. How can they suppress witness information? But this was uh, 
court documents that I came up to do with Adrian Brennock and the Commissioner of Tax, it's because of a bankruptcy notice. Yes, Wollumbin Horizons is not only in receivership, but Adrian Brennock is actually a bankrupt. According to what's written on here and the orders, he, he applied to have the bankruptcy notice set aside and the court said on the 12th of June, um, we'll give you an extension to comply with the bankruptcy notice until the 14th of August, in which time the court said no, dismissed, and basically um, he has to comply with the bankruptcy notice. Now bankruptcy, it seems, has got a lot smaller. It used to be seven years, but now it's three. Well, it could be five, and but now it's down to three and one day. Three years and one day. So that was just an interesting thing, and included in all these, um, in the shortcut uh, bookmarks that I've given, are also... Um, different places for different courts because you can't always search you've actually got to find all all the different courts and search specifically in there because even uh, the law library like with this one uh, a lot of these are up there because they come as case law so not every case is going to be listed there the majority yes but not every case. So I've tried to include as many different places that you can search this kind of information for yourself because um, I don't even know how I happened across this information, but um, I thought, well, and I started searching information. You just go in and, um, where's the little search button that I went in? Back. Yeah, that's the search. You just type in a name in the search and there it goes. Uh, he was just the first name because out of the whole entire um, project from its very early beginnings to right now, this person is the key player that has been involved all the way through. And uh, so basically in looking at the information, going back to the beginning and seeing where things went wrong and pretty much who set them on course to go wrong because the dream and the ideal was certainly corrupted and not delivered. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. For Wollumbin uh, area residents, you know, Murbad and Imbin, you can drop me a line because I guarantee you that uh, they move around the area too, just like you do. And if you've had experiences that you'd like to share, even be willing to put down in the stat deck and say, this is you know, what I declare to be true, and put it to the weight of opinion of many others, you, know, you can consider that. Anyway, I've been yakking enough for trying to keep it short. Take care, everybody, and I'll talk to you next time.